Howdy there, my name's Kyle and I'm going to show you how to turn your hand-drawn floor plans into digital floor plans using Photoshop. This video is part of the floor plan course here available on YouTube, which this is the fourth episode in this series. This course started by touching on the basics of what a floor plan is and then leading into learning about scale in floor plans. And then the last video, which was how to draw diagrammatic floor plans. And so now here we are in the sketch design phase where we need to draw a sketch design floor plan. In the real world, a sketch design is what you provide the client to give them your initial ideas and thoughts about the project, about your design. It is definitely not fully resolved. It is purely there to convey your initial thoughts and ideas to get them signed off by the client before moving forward into the, 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 the into the developed design, which will be the next video. So let's get into creating a sketch design floor floor plan in Photoshop. So in the sketch design, you're still figuring out where things are going to go and the building is still fluid. The design is very much flexible at this point. So you're not going to get stuck on one idea for your form, for your design at this point. In fact, the whole idea of it is to be able to provide this to your clients so then they can give you feedback and make changes uh, to what they say. Very rarely in the real world, you get you'll hand over a sketch design and it will just get ticked off by the client. They're gonna come back with feedback and changes to make. So that's tip number one, do not get fully stuck into your design. I'm experiencing this at uni at the moment. A lot of students have been giving uh, feedback from the first assignment, which was a sketch design. And some of that feedback is to change areas and to reconsider their layout. And a lot of students found this hard to do because they were so stuck and invested into what they've already done. Um, that they didn't want to change it. But it is a good habit to get into being acceptant of these ch uh, changes and this feedback and to adapt and evolve to that feedback. And so that's the first part of this process, which is to create a floor plan as a sketch, a hand-drawn sketch. And this is going to be a process. It's not going to be you sit down and draw one floor plan. It's going to be a process over days probably. Maybe you can smash it out in one day, but it's going to be different revisions of the same design or your thoughts and ideas that is going to get developed over time. And you're not just going to be working in a plan view. To figure out your design, you need to be working in section and in 3D views as well, perspective. And you need to be drawing this out to figure out what your floor plan is going to look like. And so once you've got your initial ideas, after you've done sketches and your diagrammatic floor plan, which we looked at in the last video of this series, that's when you can move on to actually drawing out a scaled floor plan, hand drawn. And as you're drawing out this floor plan, you're not going to be thinking that this is the final product because it's not, it never is. But you need to get to a point where you can present something to the client. That's step number one. You're going to be figuring out the overall form and the functional connection between the spaces of your design because that's when you can get to a point where you can start to put those ideas into a scaled floor plan. In my first year, I got really stuck on doing all these little sketches and I had a lot of ideas, but my tutor said to me, you need to just get these ideas into a scaled floor plan. And so this is the stage where you now move on and you start thinking in scale and you start fleshing out the actual bones of your design. And they are going to remain flexible. They're not going to be stuck in stone, but you need to start figuring out how this is going to work and what it's going to start looking like. So as you can see, this is my floor plan here. It's pretty damn messy. Um, and this took multiple revisions of, you know, laying up trace paper and uh, butter paper, whatever you want to call it. I got to the point where I was somewhat happy with the design I had. And so I wanted to now move into Photoshop so that I can start to create a floor plan that was able to be shown to a client that they would understand, which isn't just this mess, which I've got on paper, but something that they can see and visualize that is architectural. In this first sketch hand-drawn design, I'm including windows and doors, thinking about the thresholds and the connection between different spaces. You don't have to visualize all of your ideas. At this point, you don't want to start detailing up a design for something that may not be what the client wants. So you can use a lot of notes. And as you can see on here, I've drawn up a lot of just text notes and annotations showing what can go here, but I haven't completely detailed to resolve those designs. And so that's another thing to consider because this isn't set in stone and because the client can say no to your ideas, you wanna keep it flexible and you wanna use this as an opportunity to flesh out the overall structure of your design and not really get too in depth about the little details at this point. Whereas you can consider those things and you can think about them in your head and you can you have those ideas for them. You don't necessarily have to 
convey them 100% architecturally, visually. I think you get what I mean. So once you're happy with the floor plan you've drawn and it's to scale and it's got all the things you need in there, then you can start to move into Photoshop. And to do that, you're gonna to have to scan this with a scanner. Our university has scanners, so I can just go to university and I can just scan my thing into Photoshop. If you don't have a scanner, uh, there's apps, which actually with your iPhone or Android phone or whatever phone you have, you can scan it with your phone and then that can be brought into Photoshop. I'm not too sure if it will be to the right scale then, so you gotta keep an eye on that. But somehow you've gotta get this into your Photoshop file and the way I do that is by scanning it with a printer scanner. And so here we are, we've scanned this file and we've opened up an A3 file in Photoshop because this is an A3 piece of paper. You need to make sure that the document you're setting up is the same page size as what you drew your floor plan on. It's not the end of the world if your document is a different size to your paper size because what you can do is you can actually scale it up to the correct size in Photoshop and I have a video on that if you wanna watch that. But I'm going to assume you've now got your floor plan in your Photoshop document and it is to scale and now we can move on. So the first thing we're going to do in Photoshop is use the pen tool to draw over all of the walls. It's important here to consider what is being cut through in the floor plan view. If you don't really know what I mean by that, I would highly suggest watching the first video in this series which goes over the basics of floor plans, showing that when you're cutting through, um, well a floor plan is that you're cutting through your building with a slice, and so it only shows everything below that. And the things at the top that are being cut through are the things that are gonna have the heavier lines, and the things that are uh, lighter down the bottom, but they're going to be displayed lighter in your document. I'll show you what, that, what I mean by that. So I just hit P there, to get the pen tool up. And then what I can start doing is drawing over some of these walls. And I held shift down there so that it becomes a straight line because you don't want wonky lines everywhere. And what you wanna do is change this thickness to match what your wall is. So if this is a one to 100 drawing, and let's say the walls are 300 millimeters thick, which is quite common, that might be a brick wall or something like that, a double brick wall. Uh, double brick veneer, I think they call that. So that's going to be about 300 mils thick. So at one to 100, I need a, well, I think a three mil thick line. If I get the marquee tool out, I just hit M there. Then what I can do is just find the width to be three mils. And so that's about that thick. And so that matches the walls I've got there. And so I'm gonna try and make this, this pen tool the same width as those walls. So I'm going to hit P again to bring up my pen tool. I'm going to change this to maybe, I'm just gonna test this out, 20. And it needs to be a bit wider than that, so I'm going to try 30. That looks like it's about to scale. That could be about 300 mils. And I can double check that if I want by using this tool. That's about 2.5, so we can go a bit bigger than that actually. Let's say 40. Get the marquee tool out, and we can see that that is now 3.5. So it's gonna be a bit smaller than that. And it's just this process of going back and forth. So I'm going to say 35, and I'm going to assume that's right because it's in between 30 and 40, and there you go. It's about 3.3. I'm a little bit over there, so I'm going to keep that. Doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm trying to get at here. Now I'm going to change this color to be a black so that it showcases the wall like in any floor plan. And I'm just going to go around the rest of my walls and do this exact same thing. I'm going to change this again to 35. I'm going to make this black so that I don't have to change it every time. I'm just going to go around holding shift and I'm going to draw up every single wall. As you're drawing this along, you're going to want to include windows as well because you would have included that in your hand-drawn design. And so by zooming in, I'm actually going to copy this base up by holding alt and dragging it and I'm going to put that on the top. So now I can see where the windows are and I can easily toggle this layer on and off. So I can see that there are windows in between these walls here and I can highlight that with the marquee tool and then I can highlight more spaces by uh, holding down shift and you can see that little plus comes up and then I can start to highlight all the walls. I can turn off this base and I can rasterize this pen or I can make a um, add a layer mask, which is what I'm actually gonna do. But as you can see, by doing that, we need the inverse. So what I'm going to do is click the marquee tool again by pressing M, 
going to right click where these um, marquee tools have been, where the marquee tool has selected, and I'm going to click Select Inverse. Now it's selected everything else around that, uh, these marquee points. So now I can add a layer mask, and Bob's your uncle, you've got two windows there. Well, not quite. What I like to do is then add some thinner lines to these windows to showcase where the architrave is and where the um, the actual window sits because it's not going to just be a blank spot. If you go around the entire thing and you can do that, then you can see you come up with a bit of a base layout, not including this part here, but you can see there's a base layout for where all the walls are. All we've done is gone over the top of the base layer, which is our hand drawn drawing, which is to scale. So we know that all these lines are now to scale. From this point, we can start to add in some textures. For example, you can see I've already added in a concrete texture down here, which indicates that there's a path there. And I'm actually just going to delete this and show you how I created that. I'm just gonna delete that one as well. So using the pen tool, I'm going to use the curvature pen tool and I'm just going to draw around this path that we've got here. And since we've already done this, we can see that there's an indication of where the path is going to be. We can just easily draw around it. And I'm going to do this pretty roughly, but you guys know what to do from here. I'm going to rasterize this layer. That looks hideous. But now what I can do is add in a concrete texture once I find that. I've just found this seamless texture off of Google really quite helpful. If you are watching the floor plan course, once it's out in maybe a month or two, I'm going to add all the textures to that. So uh, stay tuned for that if you're watching on YouTube before that. And I'm just going to overlay this on top of what we've already done. And I can click on that layer we've already done. You can see I've created that path with the pen tool, but since we've rasterized it, it is now just an ordinary shape. If we select the pixels by right clicking where the actual icon, the thumbnail, of that path is, we can click select pixels and that selects all of the pixels that are around there. So now if we bring up our concrete texture again, we can put a layer mask on it and that's going to mask around that texture. And what I like to do with these textures is use the dodge and burn tool. If you haven't heard of these tools before, pretty much they're changing the exposure on the textures so what I, what I mean by that is I've now brought up the burn tool by pressing O and this is going to make that texture darker. You can see how it just darkens it up quite a lot actually. But by doing that, you can make it look a little bit more realistic and you can have, actually play around with this. You know, I might want the sides a bit more darker than the, than the middle just to showcase that shadow. And um, it, does, it does make a big difference. If you use the, the dodge tool, which is the opposite, it's going to lighten it up. And by pressing Alt and zooming in, I can zoom in and I can lighten up the inwards bit of it. And it's just, it's a small detail, but it does make a big difference after you've done all of your textures. And so there we go. We've got a concrete path, which is looking pretty good, except one thing. You can see that I've done that burn and dodge on the layer mask. And so that's why the opacity is a little bit off, but I'm going to delete this and we'll go back and just use the one that we already had. All right, see, that's what I just did. I just did that right then. Anyways, let's move on to doing some more textures. I'm not gonna show you how to do the grass textures and other stuff like that, because that's all in the site plan course, which is another series I've already done. And I show you how to create cool, realistic grass textures and other textures. I show you how to use layer masks and all that stuff. So if you've got a spare 45 minutes, that's how long the course is, highly encourage checking that out and yeah. Let's just uh, put on the textures. So I'm going to hide that. And as you can see, I should have a textures folder, which already has the textures to it. You can't see it because the base is there. If I hide the base, there we go. We've got some textures. And how much better does that make it look just by adding some grass in, right? I've also added in a bit of timber there, but I haven't gone overboard. There's no textures inside the buildings. And that's because I haven't really thought about materiality at this point. This is the sketch design, nothing is for sure. I could, if I wanted to indicate what the floor material might be, I could have done timber floorboards in the classrooms and I could have done carpet in the bedrooms and the, um, there's not even bedrooms here, but in maybe the, the lounge space and I could have done tiles for the toilets and stuff like that. But 
I wanted to keep it pretty simple for this for the sake of making it legible and readable because if you go too overboard with materials yes it can make it look nice but then it also might drag away from what you're trying to show and the point of this drawing here being the sketch design was to show the function between different spaces and how there's a connection and relationship between the two programs which is an early learning center and an adult learning space. So materials are for the next assignment. This was just about that stuff. That's why I have left it white. But you can go ahead and add materials to it if you want. It all depends on what you're trying to show. And so as you can see, this is already looking pretty good. You've turned a hand-drawn sketch floor plan into a visual Photoshop drawing. But there's a few more things we can do. The next part, you can add in some contour lines to showcase what the heights are of your floor plan. And so I've already done that. If I add in my contour heights, my lines, you can see that it's pretty basic. I'm just using the pen curvature tool and going around where the contours are just to indicate the, that this part here is much higher than everywhere else. So once you've added in some contour lines, which I also talk about in the site plan course, so I'm not going to touch on here, you can add in trees, you can add in plants, and that's pretty much the basics of it. I go over all that stuff in the site plan course as well, but I'm going to delete that. The other thing you can do is add in annotations and text because there is going to be a lot of notes you have. As you can see from my original drawing, there is a lot of notes and a lot of um, information that hasn't been included in the plan, but can be referred to just to make it more readable. But that's pretty much the basics of turning your hand-drawn floor plan into a Photoshop floor plan. It looks much better than if I were to hand up this piece of shit on my poster. Yeah, that would look terrible. So that's how you create your sketch floor plan design in Photoshop from a hand-drawn plan. The next video in this series is the, the developed design, which is my next assignment, which I will create a video on that as well. That will be in maybe six weeks time. So sorry for the wait. So until that next video, take care and be well.